good morning guys thank you for joining me today um, as we are continuously learning and updating our skills on the different areas of spark as a final topic before jumping on to hands-on and working on all the complex transformations I would like to help you know the importance of spark performance tuning uh, how well you may be writing a code in the same way you also need to understand the best way of writing the code the best way your query or your spark code runs faster with minimal resources and uh, in very less time for that things there are various aspects you need to consider we are going to discuss about that today okay Madhu, Madhu, Madhu. Three Madhus are there. Where is Mahinder? Okay, that's fine. No problem. Let me not focus on that one now. I'll leave that. Okay. Performance training. We are going to talk about that. The first thing we 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 have to learn in performance training is. Uh, do you remember while learning MapReduce, we have spoken very high about a topic called combiners, which is nothing but a map side join, map side uh, reducer. I also told you what is the advantage you gain when you implement combiner so the work on reducer will be reduced like that there's a concept called map partitions okay we need to understand why that map partitions is performing better than any other maps once again i would like to re, uh, re rewind you all difference between map and flat map is your map will just read through all your lines and each line will be considered as one element and it gives one partition for each element flat map based on your uh, uh, lambda function you give based on the uh, delimiter, delimiter to separate each element in the line it forms uh, a data set of different elements like that here we are talking about why map partitions perform well than maps question number one question number two describing how repartitioning your rdd and how this can improve your performance question number three what are different caching options you have how can you cache your rdds and how can you use those caching rdds for the next purpose in without calling the whole function again okay describe how checkpointing can reduce recovery time in the event of losing an executor we have discussed this one as well your rdd that is being transformed will be carried by an executor for any reason if that executor is dead then the following executor will take the responsibility of carrying that forward in this process there is a concept called checkpointing if you enable checkpointing your next next executor which takes the responsibility of first executor okay will not have to start from beginning if checkpointing is available it can start picking up from the point where it is dead that is the situation describe the situations where broadcasting increases runtime efficiencies broadcasting is different broadcasting variable is different we will be discussing about in detail uh, with respect to spark 2.0 releases okay now you also have to understand the options available for conferring executors theoretical understanding of executor is different and based upon the code you write understanding the amount of transformation work your code is doing you need to define the configure the executors which we'll be talking about explain the purpose and functions of yarn we have already discussed about yarn performance training we know what is uh, uh, v codes we know what is memory 
we know what is a container we know what is a scheduler we know what is an application master we know how uh, the the threading and weight of each share works and how they share among themselves okay now let me give you a quick introduction of map partitions versus map guys this all is all going to be theoretical however i have written few quotes that will explain how that is making a difference but performance optimizations is just you have to understand the concept and you have to apply the concept that's it okay now map partitions versus map mapper transformations are narrow operations which benefit from partitions being operated on independently from each other because your mapper transformations will be dependent on that on that process itself okay it is not dependent on any other process any other executors for example when we when we when we discussed about uh, functional programming okay we also said a function dependent internally within the flow of function definition or this function is called out somewhere else <clears throat> like that your mapper transformations are narrow operations okay in this process it is only getting benefited okay this benefit will be independently to each other but they are not dependent on anything else or any other external transformation now let's talk about map transformations the map transformations api is a kind of is a kind of map transformation that can be used when both inputs and outputs are iterable iterable means it keeps on counting keeps on counting keeps on counting plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 it has to pass through each of the element in the rdd to give you the result your input is an iterable your output is also iterable that is the difference between mapper transformations and map tra ma mapper transformations and map partitions okay map partitions is used in the transformations where your input and output both are iterable mapper transformations are very narrow wherein they will be benefited with the partitions because they are independently they are operated independently from each other they are not dependent on anything okay now this one the mapper transformations one second the mapper transformations and map partitions will be rdd partition level okay whereas the map api the map partitions api will be on element level you need to understand that okay the map partitions will be rdd level and the map api will be element level rdd is nothing but combination of elements okay element is combination of elements is an rdd that you need to understand map means it goes through each of the element map partitions is talking about the whole rdd okay that is the reason why in the beginning of the class itself i have told guys map you have four lines that is considered four inputs that four inputs is four blocks four blocks four partitions okay now now this four partitions initially when you when you invoke it it considers and starts the partitioning but on top of this map function if you apply map partitions then it is giving the partitions at rdd level or the whole transformation operates on rdd level putting the partitions aside hope you understood the logical difference there please don't get confused let me know if you are not clear now in here i will tell you an example very good example you are trying to initialize a database connections when mapping an rdd i am not talking about elements i am talking about an rdd this rdd is having very big elements let's say 200000 of elements when this 200000 of elements are there in an rdd it is spread across four rdd partitions okay so the huge elements 
are spread across four RDD partitions. Fairly simple. Now, in this case, in this case, when you are initializing a database connection and when you are using, uh, when you are uh, mapping an RDD with so many of elements in four partitions, in this situation, when you use a map API, each element will require a database connection to make with the results of 200,000 initializations. Because, as I told you, the map API works on the element level. You will be needing 200,000 initializations, 200,000 connections, 200,000 threads. They are all same meaning. Okay? In the same example, if you use map partitions API, the whole the partition gets sent to map a function at once. But as there are four blocks, you will have four database connections. As you say four database connections, there are four drivers. That's it. Now, once this is initialized, the elements in the partitions can be iterated through and transformed until and unless the transformation is completed, each element in the partition, each element in the RDD's partition can be iterated through transformation is completed. Now, this reduction in the number of initializations that must take place can result in significantly improved performance. Okay. Having many connections is beneficial when your transformation is very complex. If your transformation is not complex and if you are simply releasing many connections, guys, connections, threads, partitions for this slide are same, but it changes in the next slide. So don't get confused. I want to make this clear. Okay. For this slide, connections, threads, drivers and partitions all are same. Now, that is the difference between the partitions allocation at element level, partitions allocation at RDD level, how the elements are read in map API, map API, how transformations are read in map partitions. Hope you are all aware of this complex logical difference. If you are not clear, let me know. I will not move forward. Just a quick check everyone the whole concept is the whole slides today depends on this one this is the base so i want to make sure one question how does a map partition decide that it needs four rdd partitions that's what i told you right it is spread across four rdd partitions they have given you the statement there okay when you are trying to initialize a database connection Okay, no, no, not in the config settings, not in the config settings. As I said you earlier, one block, one partition. Okay, but here they are already telling it is spread across four RDD partitions. As you have four RDD partitions, you have four connections. Or if you have four blocks, it will be four threads, four connections, four partitions. Like that, your 2000 elements are spread across four blocks across the nodes. That's what it is. Okay. Never, never you mention the configuration, RDD partitions and the configurations, but you can define in your query itself or code itself, which I'm going to explain in the next slide. Any questions? Anybody, any questions? Uh, Amar, I have one question. Mm. Uh, you know, we have mapper and uh, map partitions here. Mm. Mapper means uh, is mapper related to map reduce program or uh, it's a map and flat map thing. Map and flat map. That map is different. I told you yeah. earlier also. Park is completely non map reduce process. Yeah. Map reduce is execution framework along with the flow of your development in Hadoop. Okay. okay. Like that, a map is a pre-transformation layer to read the data or to form an elements and then form an RDD and then work on the transformations like that. Okay. okay. Now let's move on. Hope everybody is happy with this one. Now let's let's take an example. Uh, I'll explain this example in two, two minutes. 
but one thing you need to understand is let me not you tend to confuse with this one I'll show you that now let's see what we are doing here let me close other non required things okay see you are creating an RDD and you are parallelizing it but you carefully observe guys what brackets are you using here once again everyone carefully observe what brackets am I using here I am not using square brackets there is a reason for that I'll explain you that one these kind of sensitive things are very important now if you see here I am creating an RDD first I am parallelizing them and I have two I have a day I have an RDD or I have two elements coupled one two three four five six seven eight as one and two as other one okay let me go ahead and do that One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is fine, no problem, comma two, because one is one element and second is second element. That is perfectly done. Now I'll apply RDD one dot map partitions. Carefully observe, carefully observe the magic here, map partitions. While applying map partitions, you need to uh, invoke your anonymous function, which is lambda. After lambda, what am I doing? I am invoking an uh, I'm, and invoking I'm, uh, assigning a variable x and applying some of that one, okay? Which is x, and after that I do sum of x. And after I do sum of x, I have to close the bracket, and now close the main bracket dot collect that's it let's see what happens now you got 10 comma 26 now you may ask me Amar what the hell are you talking how did you get 10 comma 26 now this is one partition this is one element actually this is an other element that will be your understanding okay that will be your understanding but the way, the way your map partitions will take is, okay, I'll delete this one. Now, here, this two means divide this whole data set elements into two partitions, which will be like this. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10. That is here. 5 plus 6, 11. 11 plus 7, 18. 18 plus 8, 26. That is here. Now, guys, I'm deleting it. What are you asking here? You're asking sum of x. What is your x? It has to iterate through x here but why is it not iterating you are telling I want two partitions when you have two partitions what it will do this is partition 1 this is partition 1 this is partition 2 so what are you doing you are asking sum of x sum of x mean 1 of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 okay this is partition 1 result 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 now you have it collecting it. It came to 20 comma 6. Anybody, any questions, let me know. This is the importance how your data set elements or RDD elements will be map partition before it get transformed. Let me understand. Let me tell you one more thing. If you don't implement this map partition, okay, and if you directly do this sum of x, you know what it will do? It will do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. It will give the results 
and it will give 2 plus 0 as other result. It will say, boss, I have multiple keys and I have one value. Or you swap keys to values and then start counting. That is the level of confusion you tend to give to Spark if you don't give map partitions. The term map partition itself has made a big difference for the Spark to understand this guy is not talking about key and values or key and group of values. This guy has given a data set element and now he is asking me to uh, divide it into two partitions and start processing. Hope I am clear. I think I am clear. If I am not clear, let me know. If you don't understand this, I can help you once again because this is very, very important. Every slide. How will it calculate if there are odd numbers of digits in the first element? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Whatever you have in your data elements, it has to break into two partitions. Trans See, you give 1 comma A, 2 comma B, 3 comma C and everything. You ask it to count. It will still try to count. It may fail to give you results, but it will still try to count. While trying to count, it will break the whole elements into two partitions. Okay, that is what the funda is. We are not talking about transformation. We are talking about how map partitions will tend to give the result. Will uh, how map map partitions will block will divide your data before going to transformations. Any questions? Let me know. I'm happy to discuss because every slide in this is very important. So Amar, basically there is, we have eight. Uh numbers right eight 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 numbers within an element hmm. uh, if we have nine numbers then how it will split, split it will take first five and then next four or first four then next five 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 four or four five it, it, it doesn't make any big difference it doesn't make any big difference it is just it is just breaks into partition it can also break into three six and six three also let's try let's try I'll show you that one also let's try Let's show that one also. Why? Why this collab ID? Okay. Now let me show you that one. No, I'm gonna remove the ten from there. The subtle line. That's fine. I can do that for you. No worries. Do you see that? Now let's see. Na, 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 na. Na, na. If you take till here, okay, so it is still the same. 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10. So it has taken 4, okay, 5 plus 6, 11, 11 plus 7, 18, 18 plus 8, 24, 24 plus 9, 35, okay. The reason why it has taken 4 plus 6 is the initial default partitions for Spark will be 4. Okay. If, if you have more than 4 data elements, if you have 3 data elements, it doesn't even bother. But always the number of partitions will be not less than 4. Okay. Like the way when you did your map, your, your, I think I have not explained you that one. I'll explain you. In the scoop import statement, if you don't mention anything, okay, ideally your scoop will process the data and partition it into four partitions. Okay, that is what it is. Now, now let me go back to my statement what I made earlier. In this statement, if we have 1 comma A as one element, 2 comma B as one element, 3 comma C as one element, 4 comma D as one element, like that, if we have 10 elements, which are, which are group of, which are key and value pairs as one element, in that case, your partitioning may differ from 4 is to 6 to whatever the way your elements will be read by a partition. You cannot say that. That's what I was coming from. 
Am I clear, Mahendra? Perfect. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let me go back. Okay. Now, I'm explaining you this 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 bit now. The first line will create an RDD one as an iterable list of numbers and tell Spark to split into two partitions. I explained it very clearly. Now, the next line uses map partitions to sum the values in each partition and return the individual elements. I have underlined it because that explains everything. The next line, what map partition doing? It is just summing the values in each partition and then giving individual values, results. Okay. If this results need to be further combined, the output could have been saved as a new RDD, changing the second line as follows. Changing the second line nothing but RDD2 equal to RDD1 dot map partitions lambda x sum of x. Okay. Guys, one more thing. One more thing. Till date, till date, we haven't used this one. You always use square brackets. We haven't used square brackets today because we are using circle brackets because this is a partition. Okay. Lama, you can try that. It will give you very clearly what results it would show. Very simple. It, it just breaks into three partitions and it will shuffle it. Okay. Now, if, if, if your thing is broken into three partitions, then your results may also differ, which will be quite different example. I, I'll show that. When you raise the question, I think I'm responsible to solve. Let me show you that. Let me, it just one second. Don't worry. I'll show that. Now I'm giving three partitions. Okay. Now let me go and collect it. See the way how it broken. One plus two, three. Three plus three, six. Four plus five plus six. Four plus five, nine. Nine plus five. Four plus five, nine. Nine plus six, fifteen. Seven plus eight is fifteen. Fifteen plus nine is twenty-four. Okay. With that one, if I do comma ten comma three. I have 10 with three partitions. Okay, now let me show you that, how that works. It's same, 6, 5, 15, 34. So, the first one didn't change, second one didn't change, third one changed. Mean, it has given 3, 3, 4. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Okay, 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 15. Okay, 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 is 34. That's why it's split it across. Okay. Hope you are now clear how the partition will work. Now let me move on to the next bit. So if you wanted to save the results in a different partition, you can do RDD2 equal to RDD1 dot partitions. Fair enough. Sir, if we, if we keep on talking on the same thing, we'll end up How many did you give? That's okay, that's okay, yeah. 21, 57, 93. Okay, so uh, what is your result? 21. When you said 20, let me, your chat, I'm just extending the chat window, bear with me. Because I'm, I can't clearly see. Okay, so you made two part, three partitions, you have 18. So your first one says 21. 21 means 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, 15 plus 6, 21. That is perfect. And then 7 plus 8, 9 plus 9 till 14. Yeah, so it has broken, right? Yeah, it has broken, but it did not take the first four, right? That's the question. That's what I was asking. No, no. Taking, that's what I'm telling you. Taking first four is the elements. Here we are talking about partitions. Okay. Reading elements is again a map, a map operation. Okay. Applying partitions is the map partitions work. Let me correct you. Let me not confuse you first, 
okay now in my earlier statement when i was explaining to mahinder where am i in here okay if you see 9 comma 2 it has given 10 and 35 okay with this one first your map operation will read through and say I have nine elements and then the map partition will understand so 9 by 2 can I go 3 plus 6 or 4 plus 5 okay as as 4 is greater than 3 it will prefer 4 question number 1 I mean uh, approach number 1 in your case how many elements you have total 18 Eight. so what, it, what is 18 by 3 yeah. what is 18 by 3 6 so it will start counting from 6 6 6 6 if you give 19 by 3 it will basically start from 6 but the okay. second set yeah. of elements will be 6 plus Mahendra Garu, yeah. Mani Garu no I don't want to confuse you that's the reason I'm trying to explain yeah. now it's clear okay perfect that's good that's because because this this today's whole class will be dependent on this slide the whole class today all slides are dependent on that slide that's the reason I'm taking the leverage and I'm taking that chance to uh, make things very clear for you. Varun, are you clear? Perfect. That's good. That's good. Now this slide is completed. Let's move on to the next slide. Here I'm going to explain you the bracket around sum x are required in this example because the input and output of the map partition must be iterable. Okay. Basically, if you consider our earlier uh, definition of lambda function and uh, assigning a variable and then calling a function we we used sum of x okay but after sum of x we haven't used exclusively uh, other brackets on top of it there is a different way of uh, there's a, there, there is there is there is a different way of uh, invoking the partitions and there is a different way of invoking partitions and there is a different way of invoking the uh, data elements as an RDD. Now, this bracket around the sum is iterable. That is the reason why we have maintained sum of x and then brackets. Now, without the brackets, to keep the individual partition value separate, the function would attempt to a the function would attempt to return a number rather than a list of values and such would fail. Again, a complex transfer, complex statement. I would have underlined it. So I'm sorry, I haven't underlined it. Now, the brackets around sum of x is required in this example because input and output of map partitions must be iterable. Iterable means repeated. It is dependent. Okay. De it, dependent means uh, it has to iterate throughout the completion of the transformation. That's it. Now, without the brackets to keep the individual partition value separate. Now. You have one partition, it counted, it gave you a value. You want that to keep it separate. In that case, the function would attempt to return a number rather than list of values. When your result must be list of values, okay, but you gave a number, that will tend to confuse your next stage of the transformation. For example, for example, you have you have reduced okay what should your reduce do you have 1 2 3 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 3 6 this 6 will go to a next input this result 6 will go to a input to next transformation that is the process instead of 1 instead of 1 plus 2 plus 3 if 1 2 3 is going as a result to next uh, transformation you tend to fail that that kind of things you need to understand while you define the data element and while you define the RDD while you define the partitions okay now if the total sum was needed you need to perform an additional operation on RDD2 from the modification of line 2 above now let me see here sum of x is 
collecting just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Now if you do A and A plus B, that is simply summing 1 and 2, a simple modification. Now, <clears throat> this way you can use uh, map partitioning to understand how partitions makes a big difference. Okay, now parallelism. Don't tell why, don't, don't think why Amur came to Java concept again. It's not Java parallelism. It is a partition parallelism and RDD parallelism. Okay, let me explain you that. The corner store of performance is park centers around the concept of narrow operations and wide operations. Okay, N wide is throughout your data elements and RDDs. That is very wide. Narrow is this RDD, that RDD. They both know what, where the data is. The transformation applied on third both and your result will be straight away. The wide transformation is you have transformation 1, transformation 2, transformation 3. These three transformations are interdependent on the whole data set spread across the cluster and you can't, you can't define or let the function complete without doing the whole operation. That is the uh, wide operations. Now, your, how your RDDs are partitioned initially without the changes made done can make a significant impact on performance. No, no. In your narrow operations, why you are, how you are added is a partition is a different concept. In your wide operations, how you are added is a partition is a different concept. Means different approach. But what is the best way you are added is a partition before transformation is the best way of improving your spark performance. Now, inherent parallelism and parallelize. Okay, now. Guys, one more minute, one more minute. When I mean to say parent RDD, when I mean to say a child RDD, the only difference is your parent RDD has got 10 elements. These 10 elements are spread across multiple nodes and that elements which constituting the RDD are child RDDs and the whole RDD that has got full collection of elements is the parent RDD. Okay. Now let me go and explain you. Once again, a parent RDD is the whole RDD that is collected. Child RDD is individual elements spread across the nodes together combining an RDD is called child RDDs. Okay. Now, if data set has no parent, such as forming an SA dot parallelize. Now, what is SC dot parallelize doing? Your SC dot parallelize is nothing but the elements what you define, it forms an RDD out of that elements. It is not a paired RDD, it's just an RDD. If it is a paired RDD, again you get key value pairs. You change your uh, elements into RDD and to that RDD, you assign a word comma one. So key will be your word, one will be your value. In here, we are talking about parallelize only. The way your parallelize aligns an RDD to elements, then total number of CPU cores across all the executors for full, for full Spark application will be used unless the value is 2. Okay, the minimum number of partitions. Now here, okay, the other way how I can explain you this one is, if you don't have any parent RDD and if you are just forming an RDD using parallelize then by default your your REPL will start with two transformations okay oh sorry two partitions these two partitions will be using the total number of CPU cores across the YARN containers dedicated for that process for that YARN for that Spark application okay this is called spark.default.parallelism property. If you want to go deep into that, you can refer to the following document. Okay. The document is Arch. Let me open that one also. That will give you some information. My PPT is not, I don't think I would be able to copy it because it is, activation is gone. 
let me still try no it won't work it won't work no that's fine well, if you just have a look when when the slide reaches you you can just deep dive into it no problem we have covered so much i'm really very proud because 120 slides is big thing we covered each and every important bit we haven't left anything Today I'll send you an email uh, on what is old, what is new, and what we are going to change. And my my problem solved scenarios would also need to change. So um, I'll work on that this weekend and change everything and give it to you. So you guys can start practicing it. Okay. Now, that is what it is. The default parallel is very important. Guys, once again, nothing to confuse here. Parallelism is nothing but do you have a parent RDD and child RDD. If you have a parent RDD, that will be different, which will be explained next slide. If you don't have a parent RDD, and if you are just creating an RDD with sd.parallelize, the default partitions that comes from REPL will be two, okay? The, M the, the total number of CPU cores across the executors that will be used also be two, because you have two partitions, okay? and you have two virtual CPU cores needed for each partition. That's it. Very simple. Straightforward. Okay. Now, in this continuation to the first uh, RDD parallelism, the Spark's goal of aligning the RDDs and number of partitions to that of the core available is based on the intention to make sure no resources are ideal when an operation of RDD has been performed. The, this is the core and heart of the uh, this RDD parallelism. Once again, why Spark is so much tightly coupled with partitions is partitions and the cores available. Now guys, you have a thread, you have a process, you have a partition, which means there is one active driver that is taking your uh, request to Spark cluster. How is that executor or how is that partition going to work? It needs something to work. That is nothing but your cores, your virtual cores and memory. That is the reason why the Spark goal. That is the reason why the Spark goal of aligning the RDDs to cores is important because it don't want any resource are idle without being utilized when the transformation started working. Okay, now these partitions that have very small number of elements or extreme cases at no elements, depending upon the circumstances this can improve or hurt performance because partitions having small number of elements if you have two if you have just two elements if you give four partitions each partition will definitely take one core cpu so you have four co four four cpu cores being used and whereas you have only one element one partition is doing the work simply your three other partitions are eating cpu which would have been useful for some other process that's how it is. Sometimes it may increase performance. Sometimes it may fall the performance. You need to understand that. Okay. And now the parallelized operation can take an optional parameter to make number of partitions larger or smaller than the default value of application, which I'm going to show you now. Okay. Now. okay in here the default parallelism is 8 because how much you have what did we give earlier 1 2 3 4 5 okay you have 8 now let me show you another example This also taking eight okay so which means for this for this specific uh, uh, spark configurations uh, the parallelism or uh, based on the v codes that are assigned it is taking eight 
let me let me do one one thing here i'll take it out okay if i take that out Sorry, 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 one minute. There is a syntax error. Now, let me see sc dot default. It is also taking 10. This it is taking 8. I'm sorry. So now let's go back and check changing the rdd partitions now rdd1 now if you see here uh, rdd1 dot that's all that's what get them partitions but uh, let me do get them partitions for the rdd1 get num partition one second guys spelling mistake partitions okay again it is giving eight okay now let me follow the other thing uh one two three four five six and num slice is equal to eight within the within the statement itself okay so what i'll do there is i'll follow the old data set okay instead of comma two what i'm doing is i'm giving num slices equal to h when I give 8, the way how it takes will be, okay, it is taking 8. Now let me take 10. Now if I see num partitions, it's 10, okay. Now if I take 2, what is your num partitions? It will be 2. Now, so what you understand here, your default parallelism is 8. And the number of num slices you give will be number of custom partitions you are defining to your spark to start and take and start working. That is the funda of this. One thing is on the laptop where I collected the slides, the, the test where I have done that has given the default parallelism of four based on the configuration that has. This one, based on the config it has, it is showing 8, okay? Now, apart from that one, if you wanted to give a custom parallelism across your elements in an RDD, you can give num slices. Your num slice nothing but you are parallelizing your operations. Now, we have you have 8 partitions, you have 8 for each partition, you'll have two cores, or at least you can, at least minimum you'll have one core, but you can hard code and give more if you want. That's how we can understand that one. Let me go to next thing. Now, this is parallelism and how it is working in parallelize. I have shown you an example. Now I'm going to show you inherent parallelism text file. Okay, now the default parallelism aligns with the number of blocks. We know that if you have three blocks, you have three threads, you have three drivers, you have three partitions. And this three partitions is also aligned with the parallelism. Okay. If you want to increase the parallelism, you can put num slices. Okay. Now, if the file is only one block in size, the RDD will be created with minimum size of two partitions. That's what I told you also. The minimum will be two partitions. Minimum. Minimum will be two partitions. Okay, now this can be increased by providing a second option argument declaring the number of partitions preferred. I'll show you that. This number cannot be less than number of HDFS blocks. If you have three HDFS blocks, your partitions cannot be one. It should be at least three or more than three. However, this will not surface an error, but this will badly influence your Spark performance. Okay, in this way, it will just create the number of partitions equal to number of blocks. That is the minimum, minimum requirement. Okay. Amar, oh, no problem. No problem. Please. Yeah, yeah. Take well. Take care. Take care. Take care. No problem. Okay. Now, this is how 
this is how it exactly works okay now default parallelism you understood you understood num slices you understood what is the default partition based on the number of blocks you have okay now let's take an example you have an sdfs block size of 128 mb okay it has been easily accounted for an rdd partition size i agree with you now furthermore spark can more quickly create rdd by reading a single hdfs block and creating two or more that's what we learned from the beginning of the sessions spark is nothing but it first reads a file that file will be broken into blocks and based on the number of blocks that number of minimum partitions will come up now the way it can read from multiple hdfs partitions will be usually on separate worker nodes to a single rdd partition very good now here we are going to uh, create an example and uh, creating an rdd from hdfs file first thing you are getting two partitions second thing you are getting minimum partitions equal to four and third thing you are getting minimum partitions is one okay notice that it defaults to two partitions but can be created with only one since the number of blocks is also used to one that's what i was trying to tell you okay minimum starts with two but you can also change it to one if your element is only having one block okay that is the difference you are trying to come up here now trying to reduce the number of partitions to value a smaller than number of blocks does not produce any error but it is simply set to the minimum size based on number of blocks i repeat it this is the third time i'm making this statement so try to understand the sensitivity of it and this will come again in the next slide also based on the requirement based on the concept of the next slide trying to reduce number of partitions to a value less than number of blocks does not produce an error but it's it it set simply to a minimum size based on the number of blocks now as with parallelize the goal is still the goal is still to have enough rdd partitions to allow all executors to be working during the operations especially narrow ones very good the reverse can happen when with small hdfs file compared with parallelize okay that's what i told you the above statement trying to reduce the number of partitions to the value number of blocks will not give you an error it will just limit to the minimum number of blocks now a small file will take up few partitions yes generally speaking you should increase this number on small files to be more in line with number of cores available this number of cores available will be aligned with number of partitions your spark rdd has taken if it has taken four partitions it will have four virtual cores available for it to process the work got it any confusions anyone now here you are talking let me ask you once again any questions or confusions on this one the way you have uh, your num partitions and num slices work anyone it's fairly easy and no confusions okay very good now the narrow operations can be executed locally and do not depend upon any outside or current element that is what i told you in the beginning of the session this statement will be repeated moving forward the narrow operations can be executed locally okay this will not depend upon any other outside the current element not talking about rdd we are talking about element carefully observe now the examples of narrow operations are map flat map union filter okay from today onwards i am not i will not talk to you in terms of map flat map i will talk to you like narrow operate narrow operation and wide operation when i talk when i ask you about implement narrow operation you have to say narrow operation okay map flat map union filter that's it now look at the look at the look at the diagram in here you have rdd 1a 1b 13a 13b 12a 14a 12b now here here there are no dependencies between partitions each party doing its own work okay 
the transformations maintaining the partitions of the largest parent RDD of the operation, which means, which means, uh, like I said you earlier, your parent RDD and child RDD. Parent RDD is the main RDD that has elements grouped. Now, each individual child RDD is combined together forming a parent RDD. Here, here, the transformations are maintaining the partitions of the largest parent RDD for the operation. Means, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In blue color, you have 4 partitions. In green color, you have 4 partitions. So, your transformation as a whole will maintain 8 partitions. If you want to make, you can make the changes with num slices and min partitions. Num slices will do the parallelism and min partitions will create the minimum partitions. Okay, that's what I'm coming from. Now, for a single parent RDD transformation, repeat, for a single parent RDD transformation, including filter, map, union, and map, flat map, union, the resulting RDD has number of partitions as parent RDD. That's what it is. Okay. Now, if your input has got four partitions, the moment it has finished the work and given you output will also have four partitions because the connection will be still active throughout your execution framework. That is the point to be highlighted. For any single parent RDD transformation, an RDD having elements in it, it can be filter, it can be, it can be filter, it can be filter map, it can be map. The resulting RDD has number of partitions as a parent RDD because the resulting RDD sometimes may be input to another RDD. Like defining earlier, instead of changing the result Instead of writing a result in new RDD, I have just given collect there itself. If at all, I'm instead of using collect there, if I'm assigning that to new RDD, my performance should not be reduced. For that reason, it is by default functionality. Whatever your parent RDD partition has, after the transformation also, that, that parent RDD partition will still be alive. Hope I'm clear on that one. Okay, now, if you see here, this is the narrow dependency operation for map, flat map, and filter. Now, you see here, this is for union. The way, the way it makes a difference between union and map, flat map, filter is little different. I'll show you that one. For combining transformations, union, such as union, combining transformation is you have RDD1, RDD2. You are unioning RDD1 and RDD2. Now, your RDD1 will have four partitions. Your RDD2 will have four partitions. When you combine these two partitions, how many part, uh, once you combine these two RDDs, how many parts will you have? That is where the dependency, the narrow dependency comes into picture. This narrow dependency with map, flat map filter will not have that connectivity. Here it has a connectivity. Now, the transformations maintaining the partitions of the largest parent RDD. Here, do you have that? Do you, here, here, in this statement, transformations maintaining the partitions of the largest RDD of the operation. The same thing is also repeated here. For, for the reason, for the reason, for the single parent RDD transformation, including filter, map, and flat map, Resulting RDD has number of partitions of RDD. Okay. The reason why I have highlighted the sentence here and here is irrespective of your RDD is going to join to other RDD or your RDD itself doing the transformation. The number of transformations you have number of partitions you have at the input will be same as number of partitions you have at the output. Okay. That's a whole fund of it. But you need to understand how the partitions will work when you are unioning it, how the partitions will individually work when you are filtering them, mapping them, flat mapping them.
okay fairly simple no confusions here there shouldn't be any confusions is everybody clear with this one narrow dependency operations with uh, union versus map flat map filter any questions let me know i can i can i can explain you once again everybody happy any question let me know now this narrow operation we talked about map flat map filter along with union okay guys very simple union means your rdd1 has got some elements your rdd2 has got some elements you are combining all under one rdd okay now your rdd1 has got four partitions your rdd2 has got four partitions okay four plus four eight partitions working on adding or getting one big rdd this big rdd which has got eight elements in it will still have eight partitions at the worst case at the worst case it will have four partitions because your parent partition your parent rdd partition is four okay that's why you need to understand it may go till eight but worst case default and less will be four because your parent rdd started with four that's how it works that is what they are trying to explain here clear funny any questions mahinder any questions perfect thanks for that okay now let's see now guys observe the diagram carefully this is logical diagram not physical your rdd1 is broken into rdd1 rdd2 uh, your rdd1 is broken into rdd1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 so here your parent rdd is rdd1 your child rdd is rdd1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 but if you see rdd2 it should also be broken into 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 but they are showing the physical rdd2 but logical rdd1 try to understand now this wide operations occur when shuffling of data is required shuffling of data will work when you have reduced by key group by key repartition and join okay for example what is reduced by key doing 1 2 3 4 5 reduced by key a comma b a plus b what is it doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 it will give you the result so initially you have five data elements and your result is one data element it is reducing from 5 to 1 during this 5 to 1 there is no shuffling which is fine group by key group by key means the values of key are grouped are you a value of number 3 please come here we are all one group are you a value of number 4 we are all one group come here are you value of group 5 we are all one value come here you are grouping that is phase 1 once your grouping is done you narrow down in such a way you perform one more transformation on the group data at this stage there is data shuffling going on because you are you are one grouped you are two grouped you are three grouped must talk to each other and come to a reduced function and in that way shuffling of data happens from one node to other node now here if you observe i am looking at the diagram if you observe note that child partitions are dependent on one or more parent partition your child partition nothing but your rdd 1.1 1.2 1.3 and 1.4 this should explain you why wide operations are separate stages done the child rdd cannot exit completely unless all the data from parent partitioning have finished processing okay the way how i can say is the the green line if you see the green line 
let me draw let me show that here this one to this one okay your 1.3 is sailed rdd and this output is talking to rdd2 okay here you have shuffling and sorting or shuffling aggregating okay this child rdd cannot exist cannot exit at the same time it cannot release the partitions it cannot release the v codes associated with this child partition until unless all the parent partition completed working okay all the parents mean rdd1 and rdd2 that is what the concept is once again rdd2 is a physical partition 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 logical partitions but the parent of rdd 1.1 1.2 1.3 is rdd 1 that is what the thing is so the whole funda what we are trying to come to a conclusion in this slide is your child partitions or your child rdds cannot exit until and unless all the parent rdds finished processing okay it can be physical it can be logical all the parents partitions must be parent RDDs must be finished processing only then it will release the v codes only then it will release the threads only it will release the partitions fairly simple and easy okay now let me move on to the next bit now the example one in the image shows you four rdd1 partitions is it rdd 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 fairly idea good now this is reduced to a single partition called rdd okay now your 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 sorry your rdd for example for example here the other way of reducing it is 1 2 3 4 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 1 plus 2 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 6 plus 4 is 10 now this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 now 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is now a new rdd which is 10 okay now this pay, this child rdds of 1 are now made into second rdd just one other scenario i am telling you okay in that case in that case the way how you can you can understand the logic is what happened okay in that way each one pulling different subset data from each rdd partitions that's how it has been managed now the diagram shows logical combination rather than a physical result yes it is now all shuffle based operations or all shuffle based outputs use number of partitions that are present in the parent with the largest number of partitions okay i come once again i tell you your rdd1 has got four partitions the, your these four partitions will be broken into four child partitions one two three four okay now there will be a data shuffling in the child rdds okay when there is a data shuffling okay the output will always be the partitions of your output will always be the largest number of partitions in this case four so it will have four partitions for a single rdd is the example done if you talk about rdd1 rdd2 you are unioning rdd1 rdd2 the max can go to 8 but the minimum will be 4 because your parent rdd started with 4 that's the explanation i have given you already i am reiterating that somebody has a question let me check no it's not a question no this diagram have resulted in rdd2 being spread across four partitions very good again it was shown as single partition to help visualizing what is happening and to prevent an overly complicated diagram okay that is the reason why that is the reason why in here they have shown you uh, 
the one RDD broken into child RDDs, but your RDD2 is only a parent RDD. Okay, that's what it is. Now, the developer can specify number of partitions that transformation will use instead of defaulting to larger parent. If you wish to, you can change it. This is shown by passing num partitions as an optional parameter as shown in the following two versions of the same operation. Your C1, C2 is nothing but A comma B, A plus B, num partitions 4 or you can also give comma 4. That is how you can give it. Okay. Now, controlling parallelism. Controlling parallelism will be fairly uh, confusing and logical part. We need to understand very carefully. Now, the following RDD transformations allow the partitioning partition number changes. Distinct, group by key, reduce by key, aggregate by key, sort by key, join, co-group, collis, and repartition. The larger number of partitions, the more parallelization application will have. This is this is very fairly uh, a very good statement. You have more number of partitions, you have more parallelization. That is true. There are two operations for manually changing the partitions. That is repartitioning and collis. Coalice is nothing but how you repartition it. Repartition operation will shuffle the entire data set across the network, whereas Coalice just shuffles the partitions that need to be moved. Okay, now repartitioning means the elements from one data set can be moved to an other data set creating a new partition. Okay, but Repartitioning will partition, they will repartition in such a way the data element in one RDD may be moved to another RDD forming a different partition. But coal is it just shuffles the partition. This partition for this data element now both of you uncouple and this partition go and couple with other data elements. It is not changing the data elements there. The, just the partition is changed in Colis, but repartition it is also changing the data element across the network. That's what it is. Now, Colis should only be used when reducing the number of partitions. RDD dot repartition is 50, and RDD dot Colis is number of partitions to 20. Okay, Colis should use only when reducing the number of partitions, and Using repartition to change number of partitions to 500 is example there and using colins to reduce the partition 20 is the example below. Now, changing the parallelism during the transformation. In this diagram, if you see, we have already learned how a split once, how you count the transformation. This, this transformations, this is the transformation. How you change parallelism for this transformation? I'll explain you. Okay. Now, this is the whole. Now, this diagram mm -hmm. one, diagram two, diagram three, diagram four, diagram five. This whole explains you the complete flow of your Spark. Now, carefully observe. One minute. I'll break it into splits. This is one. This is two. Okay. This is three. SC dot text file is one one part. Mapping is second part. Okay. And reduce is third part. This rec dot four is not involved. This rec dot four is in within the map function. Okay. Here that guy has formed used map function here and map function here. The difference between map function and this map function is in the whole data element he picked fourth record and fifth record but fifth record he wanted it to be in int format. That is the only point. So reiterating it, reiterating it, reiterating it, part one, okay, part two, part three. How your Spark will understand the partitioning, the parent child RDD and V codes to the partition, the partitioning we are going to see now.
okay now the following series of diagrams is an example of what would be going on with rdd partition of data guys carefully observe please observe you have a data file one one uh, you have a data file one this data file one is broken into 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.1 is one partition 1.2 is one partition 1.3 is one partition 1.1 is on worker node 2 1.3 is on worker node 1 1.2 is on worker node 4 you have three blocks you have three partitions now understand the number of partitions will default to number of blocks we have been talking about it from day one very good here if the file takes up three blocks on hdfs it is represented by three partitions spread across three worker nodes this is also a statement which we know so no confusions let me move forward now let's talk about first map operation i told you i have split the whole transformation into three phases the first phase is done i move to second phase in the first map operation that is splitting a csv record into attributes means if you remember our earlier statement we had four lines that four lines are considered as four inputs that four inputs will have four partitions okay now no data need to be referenced from another partition to perform the map transformation yes because each each rdd will have its own partition to shuffle and sort the data now the same is true for next map that is creating a pair rdd for a particular state and population count but one thing you need to understand here is One minute. Let me mean my set and show you with a pen and paper. One thing I understand is blue and this one. This one is uh, this one was just 1.3. Now your 1.3b came because initially it was only your CSV files. On top of your CSV files, now you have formed a map function. To map and split the data with space comma as delimiter okay this is this is your attributes this is mapped attributes this is attributes this is mapped attributes okay now your partitions has not changed the number of partitions are still the same in your mapping attributes and then splitting those mapping attributes now let me move on to next set next statement next next uh, thing okay now you have a map function now here what you need to understand is this is your attributes this is your mapped attributes and in that you have an other transformation step which is doing rec of 4 in rec of 5 1 of A, 1 of B, 1 of C this is 3C 1.1C 1.1 sorry 1.1A 1.1B 1.1C 1.2A 1.2B 1.3C do you observe within the transformation your partition has never changed your partitions are still the same okay now but the level of data elements are changing here okay this is still the same for next map that is creating a pair rdd for each rows particular state and population count let me show you that one also okay Now, guys, this is where the exact difference makes. Now, in the reduced by key transformation that calculates the final population totals for each state, there is an explicit reduction in number of partitions. Try to understand that. The reduction of partitions is controlled by an optional num partitions argument that reduced by key takes. Okay, now, what do you reduce by key do? Reduced by key means 1, 2, 3, 4 as inputs. Reduced by key a comma b a plus b means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 4 10 now 10 is 1 whereas 1 2 3 4 are 4 like that here in this diagram if you carefully observe let me show it again that 
now uh, your data has shuffled from here till here because that formed a new RDD and also here to here and here to here okay however it also been populated from here to here and here to here as well due to the shuffling and sorting okay one thing you need to understand here is this result this result this result came into this result okay this rd rdd 2.1 and 2.2 can be parent rdds now because you reduce by key this data files this thing and this rdd is changed or transformed into a new rdd called rd 2.1 okay so the whole logic here what we are trying to explain is there is an explicit reduction in number of partitions because because the elements were five or six which is reduced to one when it is reduced to one when it formed a new rdd it has reduced the number of partitions if you see earlier slides till the transformation is complete with here the transformation is completed that is the reason why the number of partitions reduced okay if you go here there is no change in partitions if you go sorry sorry one minute one minute i'm sorry i just came one step one step up then going down one minute if you see here if you see here no change in partitions here no change in partitions here no change in partitions okay but here it has changed because it has a reduced operation reduced by key your keys are completely sorted and reduced by key okay now note also when doing that when doing reduced by key the same key may be present in multiple partitions that are output from the map operation that's true that's true now now as i told you earlier are you the values of one please come here let's form a group are you the values of key two let's form a group here are you the values of three let's form a group here in this group by key there may be a common value across when that common value occurs across each group then it has to again shuffle the data that shuffling of data is nothing but the same key may be present in multiple partitions that are output from the map operation when this happens data is required to shuffle when this happens your partition will also be changing finally at end of the collect statement the collect will return all the results from two partitions and reduce by key operation to the driver now here now here this diagram this one is one this one is one this has two partitions and these two partitions will be collecting the results from the whole parent rdd and child rdd that is the funda of it that's how the whole scenario will work if you are not clear let me know i'm happy to repeat it anybody any questions anyone any questions we are we are almost done we just have two or three slides we'll finish it off perfect funny any questions for any questions bina it is fairly simple but you just have to hit it logically that's it amar query basically go, uh, go ahead, in sir. the previous slide right one minute uh, wait, sir one minute sir let me go to the slide sir one minute one minute this one yeah this one yeah go ahead certainly so it is we are saying that uh, 2.1 and 2.2 will be the parent but but they will be uh, formed from one 0.321 right so they should be child or they should be parent then good question good question see your rdd1 is a parent your rdd1 is broken into child because yeah. it has to do a lot of shuffling and sorting okay because your your rdd1 is a parent your rdd1 One comma a, one comma b, one comma c, or one point one, one point a, one point b is nothing but 
uh, elements in the rd right the reason yeah. why we have went so narrow is we have to understand how the partition is not changing throughout the transformation but when it is performed reduced by key the child party when it performed reduced by key result going into a new partition the partitions are coming down that is the whole fund of it clear now okay okay yeah go ahead. yeah one one query as well on this uh, because we have uh, given the right that property that uh, map uh, partition basically equal to 2 hmm. so that is why it has reduced into 2 but uh, there is another process going on reduced by key itself reduces the, uh, the number of uh, keys as well you can give it so there are two yes yes if you want your reduced by key to change the results to four partitions you can give it reduced by key comma four partitions okay clear okay Perfect. okay kindly bear with me i know time is 6 30 i'm almost done it just it just it just two or three two or three slides just have to explain it okay now here carefully observe here we are changing the parallelism during a transformation. How did we change it? We in reduced by key, we are telling they are reduced by key. While you come to that stage of reducing, please take two partitions and do the work. Now, in here, without a transformation, how we can change it? Changing the level of parallelization is very common performance optimization task. Very good. This diagram illustrates the difference between repartition and coalesce. Coalesce is nothing but, guys, carefully observe. Here, let me explain that one also. Here, one, two, three, four. Your four partitions came into two. Okay? Your your 1a 1b 1.1a 1.1b 1.4a 1.2b there are a lot of shuffling and sorting done and change it from change it from four partitions to two partitions okay now here if you see you have two partitions changed into four your 1.1a is changed your your 1.1a and 1.2a are changed into 1.1b, 1.2b, 1.3b, 1.4b. Okay. Now, this is nothing but RDD size is remaining the same. Only the number of partitions are changing. Means the amount of shuffling and sorting is done across the nodes. Okay. You are repartitioning and recalizing can change based upon the necessity to partition the data here rdd size or elements are not changing only the number of partitions are changing okay let come back and understand what i told you in repartitioning and what i told you in recalizing re, um, okay that's what it is one minute guys one minute with this With, this, with, with today's session, we have completed all the theory aspects of your Spark. We have covered RDDs, we have covered uh, key values, we have covered drivers, we have covered Spark context, we have covered map, flat map, reduced by key, group by key, and other important functionalities. We also covered RDD streaming, we also covered RDDs and uh, drivers and uh, uh, spark performance tuning to be honest with you we have only covered half of the performance tuning there is a lot more to learn but if I tell you that you will tend to confuse because you have not written any spark program by yourself or you have not done any spark transformation by yourself once you do a spark transformation once you see the console result giving you num partitions at that stage, I'll continue this one. Okay. But let me complete today's agenda. I'll, I'll discuss that in the next five minutes. Okay. Now.
Now, whenever reducing number of partitions, always use colis. It minimizes the amount of network shuffle. Repartitions required if developer is going to increase the number of partitions. 2 to 4, 4 to 2. If, if you are going to increase, 2 to 4, repartitioning. If you are reducing, use colis. Okay? Now, this is a standard example. In this standard example, uh, yeah, we are done. We are done. Don't worry. We are done. In this example, guys, very simple. The first thing is you are getting num partitions. Second thing is you are your RDD one. You have different partitions. In RD two also, you have different partitions. Try to understand. Okay, let me draw a diagram, otherwise you tend to confuse. Now, this is your RD1. You have one partition. Okay. In here, what happens is, you have range of 3, comma 1. You have map function x. And for each x, you are giving x. So, so, when you say range of 3, it is 0, 1, 2. And for each x, you are amending other x. So, 1, 2, 3. That is done. Okay? Here, comma 1 means 1 partition. That is the reason. Once again, let me show. Let me show you once again. Guys, first I will explain you what it is doing. And then I will explain you uh, how partition is working here. Okay? This comma 1 is partition. Okay, hope you are happy with it. I am deleting that. Now, range of 3 means starting from 0 to 3. This is key, this is key, this is key. You have an anonymous map function or you have a map function and you are defining anonymous lambda function. You are defining a variable and this is the function. This is telling for each element iterate it with comma x. So, 0 comma x, 1 comma x, 2 comma x. Done deal. Very good. This is your RDD1. Like that, like that you have RDD2. You also have one partition here. Okay? That is the reason your num partitions you got one. Here also num partitions you got one. Which is fairly okay. Now, what you are saying is you have 1 comma 2 comma 3. Okay? For each one you have to put y comma y like the way you have x comma x you have 1 comma y 2 comma y 3 comma y okay this is also fairly simple now you are joining while joining you will get two partitions because as i told you your parent rdds have one partition as a parent rdd and one part is a parent rdd at max you will have two minimum you will have one that's what I did. That's what I told you also. So when you union, what will you have? You will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 0, comma x, 1, comma x, 2, comma x. 1, comma y, 2, comma y, 3, comma y. That's what it has done. Okay? Now, guys, when you see this is RDD3 dot collect, which is nothing but unioning of 1 and 2. Now, when you see gloom, okay, Gloom is nothing but it will broke it will break it into two partitions. Okay, that breaking is nothing but this is one set, this is other set, making an array for each partition. Okay, making an array for each partition is nothing but again this one is this one is one array, this one is an other array. Okay. Now, if you do with it with partition 2, this one will show all as of same key in same part. Okay? The other way of explaining this one is, let me not confuse you. One minute. I planned something different here to show. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking what was my plan earlier.
Mm. See, uh, one point what I want to highlight here is your RDD3 2 dot loom dot correct. Okay. And your RDD4 equal to 3 dot partition by 2 has no difference at all. Okay. It is just same when you have two partitions and one partition. See, 0 comma x, 1 comma x, but, 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 one thing, one thing, one minute. Let me, let me take the pen here. The difference, the difference here and here is, when, when, I'm sorry. When your RDD3 is groomed, it has not grouped the keys. Okay. But here, but here, this is showing all of same key in same part. Okay. This is X. This is X. Okay. And then Y. Here, X, Y, Y. Because the partitions of X are tried to be, you have two partitions, right? One partition, you should have X and Y. So two X and one Y. And in the next one, two Y's and one X. This is where your data is partitioned properly and enhanced. If you see here, you have all X's. You have all Y's. Okay. Here, you have 0, X, 1, X. 2 comma x, 1 comma y, 2 comma y, 3 comma y. Okay, this RDD3 dot collect, when you did a gloom operation, it just made an array for each partition. Making, a, making an array for each partition is nothing but, this one is one set, this one is one set. This is one array, this is another array. That's it. That's it. Now, after that one, if you give partitions to, these two partitions will put 2x and 1y, 1y and 2x, sorry, 1x and 2y, fairly simple. This way, the partition is grouping the data of same key within the limitations. It can group everything, but you have, you have given two partitions. So it has done 2x and 1y in this data set and two y's and one x in that data set. That's how the whole funda is working. Any questions on this one? Any qu Did I confuse you or is everything okay in this explanation or do you want it in your approach in a different way? Amar, this uh, right when we apply the union there right on this, those two RDD Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be. Uh, it shouldn't be like zero comma x and one comma x comma y, because both are the having the same key. Sir, unioning in unioning, you are just unioning them. You are not applying key and value pairs, right? If you do okay. one, if you do, you know, see, we have three faces here. First is map. Next is flat map, and after flat map. You split the data based on the uh, delimiter can be space, delimiter can be comma. In any of this, did I split the data? I haven't split the data. I haven't came to yeah. that stage. Mm. If I come to key value stage, then I can say, this is my key, this is my value. Here, without key values, okay, is just unioning the data. And after union, after unioning, after unioning the data, it is just, see, one more thing I want to explain you here. If you have keys and values and keys and list of values, that's a different case. Okay. Here we are just doing an union operation for a list of elements. This list of elements have not turned into a paid RDDs. If you turn them into paid RDDs, that's a different. That is where I'm coming from. As these are individual RDDs, that's how they are showing. If they are paid, then I agree with your statement. The results will change like that. Clear? Okay. Okay. Not, not okay. No, no. See, 
if you understand is not clear let me know i'll i'll try to explain in different way did you understand the logic in a paid no i am yeah i'm just saying that means uh, it didn't picked up the pair concept and it just uh, give the right linear uh, elements one after the other come again come again so any what i'm saying is basically that uh, instead of doing a union of these right based on the uh, considering the pair or it didn't pick the pair or did concept it it has taken the just the linear approach of saying that one and one y or one x is a different element altogether mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah yeah so that is why it forms say at the moment instead of forming somewhere like four or something because zero is not there in one one of the rdd zero is there but next is not so it is being included as part of the union but one x and one y will make one x comma y which will be like a kind of a uh, list of uh, element right within a key that's what i'm telling you sir once again if you are if your paid rdd is done and if you are transforming your paid rdd that's how your key and list of values will come here mm -hmm. it is just unioning it and on union you are glooming it that is result different result after you gleam and after your partition it's a different result let's 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 stop it till here and your 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 approach will be valid once i convert into a paired rdd so it will give me all keys in one format so key comma values and x 0 comma 1 y 1 comma 2 comma 3 like that okay or x 0 okay. comma 1 comma okay two. yeah yeah got it got it yeah okay perfect okay, okay. yeah now after this one after this one let me go ahead with other one okay now guys hash partition hash partitions actually basically everybody when they talk about spark this hash partitioning concept they brings it first the reason why i haven't brought it first is i wanted to first make you guys understand the rdds and then talk about hash partitions now this is very important very very important because every transformation you work and every operation you do spark considers it as a hard part hash partitioned uh, data format a hash partition rdd now paired rdds can be partitioned in such a way that the keys are leveraged when determining how to partition the data an ideal example is this one your x you have x 0 comma x 2 comma x okay 2 comma y like that you have 1 comma x 1 comma y 1 comma x 1 comma y 3 okay your 0 2 2 and 1 1 3 the way you have 2 x and 1 y and the way you have 2 y and 1 x is filtered or partitioned based on a key one thing you can understand here is one thing you can understand here is it is not partitioned based on the based on the numbers it is partitioned based on the x okay this x okay this x is nothing but the hash partition term wherein the keys are leveraged you can sort your key you can refer and filter the data based on your key and this is where you are determining how to partition the data okay now let me tell you something here let me tell you something here your x and x okay your y and y if you say this is key and this is value if you say this is the key and this is the value my the statement what i made now is not applicable here in here in this whole rdd in this whole slide the way it is partitioned is based on the partition reference you have given i have two partitions so am i partitioning based on the 2 or 0 or 1 doesn't matter or 
am i partitioning based on the keys now it is partitioning irrespective of keys and values because it is not a paired rdd it is just trying to see the elements if it has same elements come here okay if it is a paired rdd it it can compare the values and all the values of the same key will be partitioned that is where i'm coming from okay might be a little confused but i'll make it clear in the next slide don't worry now i repeat the statement pair rdds can be partitioned in such a way that their keys are leveraged when determining how to partition the data means when you come to an idea how to partition the data in that phase itself all your keys will be shuffled all your keys and all all the keys with the corresponding values will be shuffled this means that a paired rdd will be created so that all pairs for a given key bind up in same partition okay now when this is done resulting partitions are referred as hashed partitions hashed partitions mean all pairs for a given key wind up in same partition i repeat all pairs means all pair of values for a given key wind up in same partition now simply reading an hdfs file or calling a parallelize function for a non rdd does not guarantee that partition okay that will not give you hash partition that will be a partition so there is a difference between partitioning of data and hash partitioning hash part hash partitioning means all the pairs or all the list of values givening for a key sitting in one partition is called hash partitioning your spark is allowed to follow hash partitioning but sc dot parallelize initially when it is creating an rdd from an element is partition date partitioning but not hash partitioning the same is true can somebody go on mute who is who is somebody is not on mute can you go on mute the same is true for map operation that creates a paired rdd on other hand operations such as partition by key co group join reduce by key solve by create hash partitions by default the hash partitioner component which must be explicitly imported and called when coding in scala very very important the hash partitioner component must be exclusively called and imported using scala guarantees the identical keys goes to same partition so the whole funda of this slide is very simple all identical keys all identical keys all identical keys will go to same partition that is called hash partition simple now the partition that is created when you have an rdd is just to break down your big rdd into child rdds but hash partition is nothing but all the identical keys coming to a one partition or other way to tell this all pairs of a given key means you have multiple keys if you have same keys that are partitioned you are not talking about values here okay your one key may have many values but sometimes you may have many keys as well same same many keys that same many keys will be on one partition identical keys in one partition is called hash partitioning and the partitioning that are created at sc dot parallelize or sc dot text is nothing but breaking your big rdd into child rdds your child rdds are now partitions and this partition will further be hash partition that is the funda hope you are aware of it hope you understood that now this concept allows many operations to skip shuffle and shuffle stage knowing that all keys are in single location thus increasing the performance when partitioning the data manually by specifying the number of partitions you want make sure to be aware how many executors are been used and try to have at least one partition per executor okay if you have four partitions you will have four executors thus this can result in performance improvements particularly when implementing the joins now preserving the hash partitions though you are clever enough and you know the hash partitioning concept you implemented you should also be clever enough to preserve those hash partitions the way you do them is once data is using hash partitions 
keeping this party is very important to help the downstream operations to run faster because now all your identical keys are in one partition as i told you earlier spark once works on functional programming okay which means your functions may be called within this function or the transformation what you implemented it here may be called by somewhere else in some other transformations in such cases if you preserve this hash partitioning which is already having identical keys it need not have to do the whole funda once again other transformation that is the example that is the funda of it now the examples of operations that preserve the partitioning is this, map values flat map values filter reduce by key group by key and join this operation don't modify the keys they just group the keys spark assumes the data is properly partitioned and uses this assumption to speed up the downstream systems this sentence are repeated because you have to understand very clearly spark assumes data is properly partitioned and uses this assumption to speed up the downstream policies for example when using reduce by key all the values of each key are aggregated we know that if the data is properly partitioned beforehand spark can assume that all the instances of single key are in same partition on the same machine with this knowledge spark can avoid doing a great data set wide shuffle this data set will reduce your disk io this data shuffle will reduce your network io this will also increase the performance of it okay in this case all the aggregations will be performed locally continuing the same hash partitioning demo from previous sections the following example shows you the two partitions from rdd4 are still observed from performing a filter operation this example okay gloom.collect will collect it and then if you do gloom.collect if you see xxx you have x carefully observe guys you have 0, x 2, x 2, y you have 1, x 1, y 2, y okay here you are filtering it in such a way that you have 2, x 2, y 3, y 2, y came from first data set 3, y second from second data set okay the way how it is doing is it depends upon the how your hash partitioning resulted above and the same hash partition followed here okay that is the importance of hash partitioning okay now if you see there are many more things to discuss but i'll record that session once we finish our practicals of implementing all the transformations okay with this one we have finished the uh, with this one we have finished our our uh, spark theoretical stuff will start working on the practicals from tomorrow i would like to take this chance and ask you are you clear with this one do you have any questions any confusions or you wanted to add anything please go ahead <laughs> that Okay. Varun. Yeah, Varun, go ahead, Varun. Uh, you know, uh, one second. You know, changing parallelism without transform. No, no, not that one. One second. Um, go ahead, Varun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one second. I'm confused. Uh, Varun, Varun, I think your your little one is yes. uncomfortable. You can call me. I'll explain you. Don't worry. All oh, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let them let them sleep. You know, I don't want to bother you. Yeah. 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 You can call me. I'll get back. No worries. Okay. Sure. Sure. Ramar. Yeah. I'll get. Anybody back. else, guys? Anybody else? Any doubt? This is very important. I'm telling you. You'll understand this. The importance and the value of this. Once we start working on transformations, trust me. Funny, Rama, Sai, Sareja, Suresh, Varun, Varun asked this question. So, anybody else, any questions? Let me know. Uh, I'm on. So uh, this is Suresh. Happen, uh, sir. If we want to. Do we have hash partitioning? Is it uh, by coding or would it 
do that automatically. So hash partitioning will come into picture when you perform reduce by key, aggregate by key, combined by key, group by key. Okay. It will do by itself. You don't have to mention it. But you need to understand the difference between the partition that is created at uh, SC dot parallelize level and uh, the partition that is created when the transformation is going on. All I all I think is coming in one partition is the hash partitioning and just breaking down big data sets into small data sets is the uh, SC dot parallelize partitioning because in that way each partition will get resources so that it can make the benefit of parallel processing and then matter. Okay, okay. Inka, anybody else, any questions? Certifications, where are you guys? How is it going? Any questions, any help? I'm going to send you an email today on the changed format of, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll send you that email today. What was changed, how is changed, and uh, what is same, what is not same, and all these things. Okay. I'm a, uh, I haven't received any of these uh, slides since this part. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell Has you. Has anybody? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I know the problem is. I know the problem is. I'll show you that because the size is very big. Three times okay. I tried sending it. Three times it failed because uh, the I have to zip it and send it. I know mm -hmm. it failed. It failed three times when I tried to send it. I'll send it today. Okay. Thanks, Papa. Guys, don't worry looking at number of slides we have 120 slides I think totally let me check 118 slides this 118 slides is a combination of six classes each class is one and a half hour okay if you try to go through all slides in a single day you'll go mad don't do that break it the reason why I didn't break it is I want whoever go through the slides I want them to have the connectivity of slide 1 and slide 2. That is the reason I didn't break it. Otherwise, I would have break it in different different concepts. Okay? So, don't try to go through all this in single day. Break it 20, 20, 20. And then, do, uh, once again, I, I would not encourage you to go and listen to recordings. Rather, I would encourage you to go through slides and practice. 20 slides a day, more than enough. Once again, the certification pattern also changed. They are now more into Spark, which explains when a when a certification vendor has changed the pattern more into Spark, then understand the demand what they have got in it. Simple. And I don't want any administrators moving forward. I want all developers. I want all my team to do Amma, Yeah. Amma, one query, like you mentioned, right, that the, in previous sessions, like the receiver, right, that reliable receiver can be written on Java, yeah, 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 or yeah, yeah, yeah. Scala one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, should we more tending towards Scala or uh, Java or instead of Python, because Python, it will be then, uh, we will not have those APIs for through which we can write a reliable no, no, sir. Uh, no, don't worry. Sir, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry at all. Because when you go, when you when you ask somebody, if you don't know Java at all, it doesn't mean you cannot develop a custom receiver there. That is the reason from the day one when we spoke over the phone, I said Scala and Python but not Java. Because some APIs which are not available in Python are available in Scala. Some APIs which are not available in Scala are available in Python. So if you know Scala and Python, you can perfectly run the whole Spark show very well, including uh, MX library and uh, Spark machine learning as well. But I encourage you to have both Spark and Python, uh, Scala and Python. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. We'll do, we'll do both things equally. Okay. I'm just waiting for tomorrow's uh, lab session and you'll really enjoy it tomorrow also same time 5 a.m. to 8 or 8 30 I leave you by 8 so uh, enjoy time with your family spend time and let's catch up after lunch after lunch we'll have only discussions no class that discussions will be your doubts 
your concerns, your questions, your planning, your strategy, your uh, how you wanted to go, how you need my help, what we are doing, what's going good, what's not going good, what are the areas where we can improve. Uh, you can tell me, I can tell you. It's a very good, let's have a good discussion like we are physically met and talking, okay? Amar, uh, one general question. Uh, can we test this as part programming and functions in any testing tool or? No, you have lab environment, right? Go and do it. You have no, no, no. I mean, real time testing of the code. That's what I'm telling you. You will have a, a Hadoop tester. That Hadoop okay. tester will have a UI environment, user acceptance testing, and the software integration testing environment. So he will be testing the your Spark code, and he will also be doing the functional testing on how the code you are given is working in respect to other applications. Okay. Now the now the new roles also started coming up like Hadoop admin, Hadoop developer, Hadoop testing is also a role released. People are recruiting for Hadoop testers also. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks each and every one of you. I sincerely appreciate for sitting so long with me, and uh, the each and everything you have learned today will definitely pay you back. I trust me. Take my word. Have a good day. Enjoy your Friday. We'll see you all tomorrow. I'm working from home. Anybody, if you have any questions, you can ping me on Skype. I can take the control or I can see your screen and help you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. I'll send the recording once the conversation is completed. Cheers. Thanks so much.